Good evening, everyone. And on behalf of the Poor Clare Sisters, Father John, and the parish team, I welcome you all to St. Clare's for the eighth night of our solemn novena to Our Lady of Perpetual Help. Tonight we will receive a special blessing with holy oils, so whether you are in need of healing of mind, body, or spirit, you are very welcome, and we are very glad you're here. I will lead you all in the singing this evening, along with the combined parish choirs, led by Mary Gaskin on piano, Katie on guitar, Lisa on concertina, and Ashling on flute. We welcome our guest speaker, Professor Jim Lucy. Jim is a writer, broadcaster, and public speaker with three best-selling books on mental health. He is the Inspector of the Mental Health Services at the Mental Health Commission of Ireland, a Clinical Professor of Psychiatry at Trinity College Dublin, and an Associate Professor of Psychiatry at the RCSI. We are grateful that he has joined us and look forward to hearing from him a little later on. Father, Je Father John is our celebrant this evening. Before he and our servers make their way in, I ask you all, whether you're here in person or tuning in via webcam, to pause and take a moment to call to mind what brings you here this evening. Please stand now as we join in our opening hymn for the last time in this month we sing Queen of the May. the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. So again, good evening, and lovely to see so many of you here again, and this is the eighth night of our solemn novena to Our Lady of Perpetual Help. So tonight we focus on what so many people have come to this novena and so many people join us from, and that is to pray for healing. And we focus on healing at our novena mass tonight. 
In the gospel, we see how Jesus came to bring healing into people's lives. He meets the leper. The leper comes to him asking to be cured. And so that's the first requirement, to come to Jesus asking him to heal us and to cure us. We know how um, rejected lepers felt back then. And Jesus cured that feeling of rejection by touching the leper. We too can show care and compassion by reaching out to those who are ill. We too can be like Jesus and be Jesus for others. We know then that Jesus says, of course, of course I want to cure you, be healed. Hopefully people will hear these words tonight too, that Jesus gives all of us if we turn to him in faith. We are in need of spiritual healing from time to time too. We are human, we do make mistakes. Let's acknowledge that for a few moments as we call now all our failures to mind. And so we pray together. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. I invite you again to be seated, please, for a few moments as I just read out again some of the many, many petitions that have been, um, been um, handed in to us and have placed, been placed in our petition boxes. And so, again, remember that your petition may be quite similar to some of those. So Our Lady, please pray for a friend who is suffering with her mental health. Help her to improve and return to herself. Our Lady, watch over our family as we travel on holidays this summer. Keep us safe and well, and all people traveling. Our Lady of Perpetual Help, please help my dear friend who has a stomach tumor and is meeting his consultant this week to discuss his treatment. Our Lady of Perpetual Help, please help my son through his addiction and recovery. Thank you for all the past favors. Our Lady, please watch over my son who is doing his exams. Help him and guide him. So again, now these many, many petitions are coming in for our young people um, preparing and sitting for their junior cert and leaving cert um, in a few weeks. Our Lady of Perpetual Help, please help my sister who is going through a marriage separation and is finding it tough emotionally, physically and mentally. Dear Lady of Perpetual Help, please pray for me as I've been doing a college project. It is a group project and the group has deserted me. Please help me to finish it. Our Lady, help my mother get over her infection. Our Lady, mind and protect her. Our Lady, help my son to get a job this summer. Watch over our children and guide them and keep them safe. This Our Lady, please help me with my court case. Dear Mother of Perpetual Help, please help heal my husband's cancer and help our daughter to make a good decision about her future life. Guide her. Our Lady, I pray in thanksgiving tonight for a young woman who has finished her treatment and is now cancer-free. Dear Jesus and Mary, thank you for all the blessings received from you to my family and myself. Sometimes I forget and lose confidence. Give me the courage to keep going. Our Lady of Perpetual Help, please help my children to guide their children the right way through life. Bring them back to a prayerful life. Our Lady, pray for my daughter who is in need of help with her addiction. Our Lady of Perpetual Help, please pray for me and my mental help. I'm really struggling at the moment. Thank you for all your blessings so far in my life. 
Please pray for a mother and family as she settles into her nursing home. Our Lady, please help my son to get through this difficult time while he waits for results of tests. Keep my family safe and well. Help me cope with my own illness. Please pray for my daughter whose marriage has broken down. I ask God to help her to get through this difficult time and all the legal procedures she has to undertake. Our Lady, please pray for my friend in Spain and her family. She had asked me to pray for her. Please let all be, un be okay for my dad. Please don't let him suffer. Please, Jesus, let all be okay and no trouble over money. We're praying tonight for a small baby who is suffering from burns as a result of an accident and is now severely sick in hospital. Our Lady, please pray for good health for all our family, especially our granddaughter who is ill from time to time. Our Lady, please pray for a young woman who has to have a bone marrow transplant, that all will go well and that she will return to full health. Help her, help her husband and young children to cope. Our Lady of Perpetual Help, can you please remember in your prayers my son, who is a guard and at the moment finding it very stressful and hard. Please pray that everything will work out for him in the future. So again, some of our petitions. So again, we just pause for a moment. If there's any petition in your own heart this night, maybe just silently just bring it before Our Lady, asking her to bring it to Jesus, who will answer our prayers. I invite you now to please kneel and we'll pray our novena prayer. And so we pray together. Mother of perpetual help, with the greatest confidence we come before your sacred picture to be inspired by the example of your life. We think of you at that moment when full of faith and trust you accepted God's call to be the mother of his son. Help us, your children, to accept with joy our own calling in life. When you learned that your cousin Elizabeth was in need, you immediately went to serve her and offer your help. Help us, like you, to be concerned for others. We think of you, Mother, at the foot of the cross. Your heart must have bled to see your son in agony, but your joy was great when he rose from the dead, victorious over the powers of evil. Mother of sorrows, help us to realize that we must expect trials and disappointments. Help us not to lose heart. May we share with you and your son the joy of having courageously faced up to all the challenges of life. Amen. We pray now the opening prayer together, and so we pray. Lord God, it is your will that we come together tonight to honor Mary as a mother, ever ready to help us. May we who implore her motherly help benefit by the great gift of salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated now. We're going to listen to the word of God. A reading from the book of James. The prayer of faith will save the sick person. If any one of you is in trouble, you should pray. If anyone is feeling happy, you should sing a psalm. If any one of you is ill, you should send for elders of the church, and they must bless you with oil in the name of the Lord and pray over you. The prayer of faith will save the sick person, and the Lord will raise them up again. And if they have committed any sins, they will be forgiven. So, confess your sins to one another, and pray for one another, and this will cure you. The heartfelt prayer of a good person works very powerfully. The word of the Lord. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Glorify the Lord, O oh, glorify. 
the with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. A leper came to Jesus and pleaded on his knees. If you want to, he said, you can cure me. 
Feeling sorry for him, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him. Of course I want to, he said. Be cured. And the leprosy left him at once, and he was cured. Jesus immediately sent him away and sternly ordered him. Mind you say nothing to anyone, but go and show yourself to the priest and make the offering for your healing prescribed by Moses as evidence of your recovery. The man went away, but then started talking about it freely and telling the story everywhere, so that Jesus could no longer go openly into any town, but had to stay outside in places where nobody lived. Even so, people from all around would come to him. The Gospel of the Lord. So on this night where we focus on the um, healing that people need in so many different areas of our lives, we're very, very blessed to have Professor Jim Lucy with us tonight. Um, Jim recently became a granddad as well, and he saw his little grandchild for the first time um, this weekend over in London, so congratulations for that. But also, I know he's a man of deep faith himself, um, is a member of the choir in his own local parish as well, and I know um, he works a lot with people with mental illness, but his message is for all people, I think, who are in need of healing. So, Jim, thanks for coming to be with us. Let's start with, in, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. I'm really over, overwhelmed by the invitation and the generosity of Father John and the poor Clares and your community, and, uh, and the tremendous joy that you can feel here and the opportunity to be in this beautiful place uh, with celebrating this wonderful novena. Uh, it means a lot to me, and, uh, and, and, and I can see how, how important it is for you. So I want to thank Father John and all your congregation for your invitation to this beautiful novena, and I'm very grateful to your hospitality. I should tell you that I've had a very large tea with all the trimmings before Mass, and uh, so I'm in, I'm in good stead. Uh, I'll keep it brief, but actually I'm now, I'm, I'm, I, could, I could go for quite a while. I guess. You see, together we're on a journey of faith, and it is a journey of healing. Of course, whatever I say to you as a layman, I'm a Christian like yourself, a Catholic like yourself, a believer, but I'm, I'm not speaking for anyone else. This is what I've learned, and I want to tell you a little bit about where I've learned it. It seems to me that this nov novena, which is a special opportunity to think about healing, is also an opportunity to think about our faith and particularly about our prayers. They're the prayers that we speak out loud, but perhaps even more importantly, I would suggest the silent prayers, our unspoken prayers, prayers we need, in fact, to acknowledge and celebrate. Christian prayer, it seems to me, is like Christian faith. It is never isolated. Look around you. Look how much you're connecting with each other. As a digression from what I was going to say, I'm going to remind myself that we know in mental health that five things work. Five things make us better. And they add up to a word which we call chime. When we chime, we get better. Any effort, whether it's in addiction or cancer or in a cardiac care unit, in the GP practice, or any endeavor you care, if it chimes, as you are chiming tonight, it will work. C stands for connection, for congregation, for collective. You're coming together. H stands for hope. No endeavor without hope can work. There's so much hope here. I stands for identity. 
Our identity is as children of God. M stands for meaning. If you have a meaning, you can survive. Viktor Frankl told us of the value of meaning. And E stands for empowerment. It is the permission, the license to chime with each other. I'd like all of you to leave knowing about chiming. Tonight, when you go home, I want you to say, somebody says, what do you do this evening? I want you to say, we chimed together at St. Clair's. This is what we did. And tomorrow, when you face some difficult task, or any other day, any other moment, think of chiming. And you'll know that you're never isolated. This is our faith, but it relies for us totally on a sense of what God is about, and in particular about his mercy. The intercession of his mother is for his mercy. It's more than a physical mechanism. We talk a lot in my world about mindfulness, about meditation, about the ability to mobilize the brain and relax, and I love all those things, but in a sense that is very secular, we talk about them as though they were simple mechanisms. But for us, it must be much more than that. Our prayer is more than a mechanism. At its deepest, it's about chiming. It's about connecting with compassion. You see, I'm a psychiatrist. That's a mental specialist, a doctor, a physical doctor. I was a GP once. My mother was a GP. My Grandfather was a GP, my uncles were GPs. But I chose to be a psychiatrist, or rather, that's how it worked out. And so for 30 years, I've been caring for people, adults, men and women, all faiths and no faith. And I also had the opportunity laterally to teach and to write and to broadcast about mental health and particularly about the brain. That's the thing that's inside here, inside that wooden box. You can all knock on it. What most people don't realize is that it's soft. It's actually not a solid organ. It's got the consistency of a yogurt. You know, one of those expensive yogurts with lots of whole fruit in it. You don't want to spill the pot. You know, it's it's very messy. We need to look after this wonderful organ And the journey of recovery is often about the journey of repair. And it's a journey I've been privileged to share with many of my patients over the years. I strive to make sure that my own journey never gets in the way of someone else. That's important. It's a therapeutic position. It's essentially authentic and professional. But what I want to tell you here, all of us, what I want to share with you after a a lifetime of mental health care, is that my patients have been some of the greatest gifts to me in my life. Knowing them, the fact that they were there and that we chimed together when we did, that they allowed me into their lives, has been nothing short of a gift. Those I cared for, those whose expertise was acquired through their painful experience of mental distress, constantly taught me more than occasionally reproached me. Quite something to be told off by your patients, but I was frequently told off. Most of my books are about the patients telling me off. But surely they guided me every day. Mental health care is a shared journey, a walk with another person in distress. But it's also an enterprise in faith, in a secular sense, in the faith that healing is possible. And indeed, we have many beliefs in mental health care, as in health care in general. These truths we share, we have belief that empathy is essential, that each of us will one day be a patient. There's no doctor patient. It's just patient now or patient later. (laughs) We're all going to be patients. It's part of what it is to be human. That health care is a human right, that mental health care is a human right. This is an election time. I'd like all of you to ask the candidate who comes to your door whether they believe and know 
that the provision of proper mental health care is a human right. So far in this country, many, many people are excluded from proper health care. But every human being has a right to the opportunity to recover. But everybody here needs to know what my patients have taught me in their recovery because they've taught me that recovery happens every day, that healing happens every day, that perpetual help is there, and that we must never lose sight of that hope. We must never stop chiming around that reality. Now, I'm not here to say that psychiatry is a new religion. It is not. It should not be seen as an alternative faith. Psychological medicine is just like any other area of healing. It's a task, using the scientific method, to understand disease and to find better ways to be well. And in this, it's very important for me here, as your guest, to never forget Christ's dictum, in which he said, Physician, you heal yourself. Humility is everything. I try to listen to the critics of mental health care. And there are many. But none, perhaps, in a Christian sense, more authentic than the great martyr Dietrich Bonhoeffer, whose own father was a psychiatrist. He said, even the most expert psychiatrist knows infinitely less of the human heart than the simplest Christian who lives beneath the cross of Jesus. Well, how do we remember what the Christian knows? The only way is perhaps through prayer. That is not to distance any of us from empirical science, the great advances of the scientific method. Not at all. These two, we believe, are God's creation. But as Bonhoeffer puts it, when we pray, we place ourselves before God at the foot of the cross. And we rely on his mercy. And so we learn something else. We learn compassion. No faith journey is static. In the depths of distress, of our distress, and each one of us will be distressed, and every family here has somebody today in mental distress, today. We learn in our stress that we struggle, and one of the big struggles is we struggle to pray. Many of my patients who would have prayed, would have had a faith, would have said something, tell me that they lose that connection, that chime entirely when they're ill. We all struggle through life, but when we do, we move between many kinds of distress. And so I would suggest, hopefully, many kinds of prayers. We move between those that have words and congregation, and music, and song, and warmth, and connection. And between those silent prayers, without words. Then we become like a child, moving back and forth between the parents or guardians, each time looking for some different kind of support, and often not finding it. This silent prayer at the foot of the cross has no text it is, though, inclusive, universal, timeless. And we believe it is heard, perhaps more than any other. Even though each day we must oscillate between certainty and doubt, between joy and anger, between hope and despair, And even then, as we ask and look to our mother as we are now, our mother in heaven, and ask her for her intercession, 
we hold on to the belief that our silent prayers are being heard. This I want you to hold on to. Even in those times, we remain human beings created in God's image and likeness. And our silent prayers are manifestations of his likeness. They are caring. You see, we are human beings who can care. And this is prayer. We care for each other. We care for ourselves. And this caring can be intelligent, but it always is human. It is not an artificial intelligence. It is more than just cognitive. At its best, it is human caring intelligence. It is the image of the way our Father in heaven cares for us. Through his spirit, we can care for our neighbor. We can care for each other here. We can care for our planet. We can care for each other, for our world, and for our future. The fruits of our prayers, including our silent ones, become the gifts of the Spirit. And through this compassionate Holy Spirit, we can save our lives and our world. No other way works. Every other remedy that is not love is false. But with that spirit, even in silent prayer, love is the single word which defines our faith, and it will save us. It is the purpose of our life. And because we have this faith, by loving our neighbor, whether our neighbor is sick or different or on the margin or alone or in our face, Whatever shape or form, the inclusion of that love, welcoming the stranger, is our route to eternity. Because in that way, we hope to one day live with the one who came to live with us. Human beings are made for this love. We are made to love, not just to like Human love is for all of God's creation in all its shapes and forms and diversities, whether it's from here or from somewhere else, whether it's been here or is going somewhere else, whether it's in trauma or in pain, we love each other because we are human and we have the capacity to love. And when we pray, we pray that we will be loved and that we will love each other and that we will live compassionately in a full human way, complete. And when we do that, we will live Christ-like in a way which is in his image. Now, is this too much? Is this setting the bar too high? No. In fact, our ambition for love needs to be expressed in a way which is so generous and potential that it too chimes. We need to believe that all of us can love and be loved and to know love and to return to love. Bonhoeffer put it well when he said, we are all members of one body, not only when we choose to be, but in our whole existence, on the good days and on the bad. We are called to love each other in our homes, in our communities, in our nations, and everywhere in the world. God made us to love, and he's calling us to love, and his mother wishes us to love, to recognize him wherever he meets us. He is saying, love each other just as I loved you. Now, this is God's love, and this is healing. Do you know, I'll digress from my written word here, but let's imagine that you have two men in a coronary care unit. 
They both have the same injury to their heart, the same heart attack. Their ECG looks the same. Their age, their weight, their circumstances, they're the same. But only one of them is going to survive this heart attack. And who is it? It's the one who chimes, the one whose spirit and hope and faith and meaning continues. The greatest killer in this country is depression. Long beyond any other. Before 50, it's the only killer apart from the motor car. No one tells you that. But our problem is not with our opportunities, but with our spirit. We need to understand that we have the potential as human beings to love one another and that we can do that. And there's nothing creepy about this. It can be silent, but it is active. And that's why we'll be asked, we're told, I think St. Matthew's Gospel tells us, we'll be told, not, did you know the, your, 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 uh, your catechism, or did you get rich, or did you have a big car? We'll be asked, did you chime? Did you see the hungry and feed them? Did you welcome the stranger and bring them into your home? Did you, did you, did you give of your time? Were you able to be a spirit? Come on in. That's what we want to do. That's the prayer of loving. And that's the prayer of healing. And so the two men in the coronary care unit, they need to survive. And if they only knew, they both need to chime. When we chime, we will be healed. And in fact, no healing is as good. This is God's healing love. And it operates in the hospital and on the main street and down the school and whether we say it or whether we don't, whether it has words or whether it hasn't, it's revealed in Christ's suffering and in his death. There's a famous theologian, Ron Rollheiser, and he, wrote this, he writes this, to explain how magnificent this love is, he says his love is so conscious of the other that it even forgives its enemies. Wow. Wow. I'm a Leinster supporter. I'm finding it hard to forgive Toulouse this morning. And I may take some time. But what can you do? He even forgave his executioners. His cross of Jesus is not helpless. Actually, it's triumphant. And so in this novena, united by his love, committed to the, well... Energetic, I can see it here, I can feel it. The ability to chime with each other, with your beautiful music and your wonderful chapel, the sense of the connectedness you have with the hope and the meaning and the empowerment that this novena gives you. I want you to have the courage to join with me because in this Pentecostal season, we have now the opportunity to remind ourselves where that spirit of love comes from. In the Trinity, it's the Holy Spirit. It is God's love here now. And that's why we can say, Come, O Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of thy faithful. Kindle in us the fire of thy love. Send forth thy spirits, and they shall be created. And together, we'll renew the face of the earth. Amen. So thanks, Jim, for those lovely words. And just so lovely to hear uh, a doctor, a man of faith, um, promoting um, how prayer and how your faith can bring healing into people's lives as well. So hopefully after tonight, we'll all become chimers. Please, God. So now we're just going to um, remind ourselves what Jesus did say to If people are not feeling well, they should send for the elders and let them bless that person with the holy oil because the blessing and the faith will bring healing and peace to all who are in need of healing. So I'm going to invite up the ministers who have been allotted to um, um, 
do the blessing. It's not the anointing of the sick. It's just a blessing with the holy oils. And if they will stand here, and we will have a little um, blessing prayer over the oils. <clears throat> and so the response to the blessing prayer is, Blessed be God who heals us in Christ. Praise to you, God, the Almighty Father. You sent your Son to live among us and to bring us um, salvation. Response, blessed be God who heals us. Praise to you, God, the only begotten Son. You humble yourself to share in our humanity. You heal all our sicknesses. Response, praise to God, the Holy Spirit, the Consoler. Your unfailing power gives us strength in our bodily weakness. Response, God of mercy, ease the suffering and comfort the weakness of your servants, whom the church tonight blesses with his holy oil. Let us pray. God of all consolation, you choose and send your Son to heal our world. Graciously listen to our prayer of faith and the power of your Holy Spirit, the Consoler. Send that power into this precious oil, this soothing ointment, this rich gift, this fruit of the earth. Bless this oil now and make it holy for our use. Make this oil a remedy for all who are blessed with this oil this evening. Heal them in body, in soul, and spirit, and deliver them from every affliction. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So the invitation will be to come forward as you would for Holy Communion. And the minister will just bless your forehead with the blessed oil and will say the words, May Jesus bring you healing and peace. And we know we're all in need of healing in some form. And maybe it's even a bad habit that we can't get out of. That is a need of healing. And maybe tonight, too, we might know somebody who is in need of healing. We can make that blessing and receive that blessing for them this night as well. So I invite the ministers to come forward.
And so we pray. Father in heaven, to this special blessing tonight, grant all of us comfort when we suffer. When we are afraid, give us courage. When afflicted, give us patience. When dejected, afford us hope. When alone, assure us of the support of all the Christian community. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you now to please stand for our prayers of the faithful. Conscious that when we gather in faith and in prayer, Jesus is with us in a special way, we turn now with all our needs. We pray for the sick, both here and at home. Grant them the strength and courage they need to face their illness daily. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Mother of perpetual help, you stood beside your son and cared for him in his life on earth. We pray for all those who work with the sick. The challenges they face each day are not always easy. Help them to maintain a sense of calm in the storm that surrounds them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, give us the strength and clarity of mind to find our purpose and walk the path you've laid out for us. We trust in your love and know that you will heal our stress. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for strength for those who feel they have no strength left. Lord, we pray for an extra measure of strength for those who have special health care or other special needs. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, help us to celebrate the unique value of each and every person in our parish and recognize that we all need one another. Lord, hear us. Lord, Thank you, Vani. Again, for a moment, let's pause in silence to offer up our own special prayer this night. Lord, hear us. Lord, we have gathered here tonight to pray for healing. We know that you will listen to our prayer because we make them to the intercession of your mother, Our Lady of Perpetual Help, so we make them to Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated now. I ask you to pass the collection of baskets. And I'm going to invite Mary and Nick, Marion and Willie and that Willie to bring now to the altar the gifts of bread and wine. Please join in our offertory hymn led by the Poor Clare Sisters, Holy Mary, Full of Grace.
pray now, friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Merciful God, as these simple gifts of bread and wine will be transformed into the risen Lord, so may he unite our sufferings with his and cause us to rise to new life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift. Since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we now proclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of hosts, hosts heaven and earth, earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes, Lord, who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. And so we thank you, Father, that your response to our ingratitude is your definitive word of forgiveness, healing, and love, Jesus. He came and shared our life in all its complexity. When we and our world were an open wound, you sent your word of healing to us, Jesus. He opened the eyes of the blind. He unsealed the ears of the deaf. He taught the lame to walk again and the mute to sing for joy. We thank you, Father, that Jesus took upon himself our sickness and confusion. He made us whole and gave our lives direction. Father, send your Holy Spirit to change these gifts of bread and wine into the body and blood of Jesus. On the night before he died, he gathered his disciples together. At supper, he took some bread. He gave you thanks. He broke the bread, passed it among them, and he said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In the same way, Jesus took a cup of wine. Then he said, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be poured out for you and for many, so that sins may be forgiven. And then he said, do this in memory of me. So now we proclaim together in song the mystery of our faith. Thank you, Father, for Christ's life among us, the way he cured us of our selfishness by teaching us how to love. We thank you for his death, the living out of love. We gratefully recall the hope we have in Jesus' resurrection and ascension to new and fuller life. Send your spirit, Father, with all its power to heal. Where we are fragmented, make us whole. Fragmented, make us whole. Where we are desperate, help us walk in hope. Where we are many, make us one. Be mindful of our sisters and brothers who have died in the peace of Christ. May they find in your presence light, happiness, and peace. Teach us to share with all people the healing and forgiveness that you have shared with us. Help us to cure the illnesses of our world, the hatred, the envy, greed, and pride that keep us apart so that one day all people can live in peace and be with you and be as you created us, children of your love and instruments of healing for one another. All this we ask through Christ, your Son, who is our health and salvation. So we pray through him and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
So now we stand as we pray to a loving Father who sent us Jesus to bring healing and peace into all our lives. We say now the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be free from sin, safe from all worries, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the King and the power and the glory yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the fate of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. And now the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. So let's for a moment just pray for peace in our world, in our hearts. Pray too for peace for all who are suffering this night. And then we offer each other the sign of that peace. This now is Jesus. This is his body and his blood. This is Jesus who invites us to come to him when we are in need of healing. This is Jesus who will always heal us, who will reward our faith in him. This is Jesus who gives us strength, who gives us hope, who gives us peace. Happy are we to be called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul should be. I came that you may live your life and live it to the full, says the Lord.
As we expose the Blessed Sacrament, please join in singing, Be Still for the Presence of the Lord. So as we gather tonight before the Blessed Sacrament in thanksgiving for the many blessings that Jesus has given us, we come before the Blessed Sacrament in prayer, asking for forgiveness. We come in thanksgiving and in praise. We come in need of healing. And so we pray now together our prayer for healing. O oh Jesus, we believe in you, we hope in you, and we love you. Strengthen our faith, renew our hope and love, and grant our prayers. Touch with your healing love, O Lord, all who feel the hurt of life's wounds. Long ago, when people prayed to you for healing, you listened to them, you blessed them, and answered their prayer. Heal us now of our sinfulness and of the hatred that divides us. Take away our hardness of heart. Open our eyes, which are often blind to the needs of others. Renew our selfishness and our greed. Give us self-control at all times. Fill our hearts with your eternal love. O oh Jesus, we ask you now to heal us, to bless us, and to fill us with your peace. Amen. Our world is in need of peace and unity, and so we pray together. Gracious Lord, we pray for all the members of your holy church, that all may abide in you and you in them. Keep us united in your love. Soften our hearts, open our ears. Help us to listen with close attention to the other person, sharing the pain caused by their wounds. Help us to build bridges rather than walls. Make us instruments of your peace. Allow us, your children, to love, to forgive, to seek justice, and to live in solidarity with all people. We ask these things to Jesus Christ in the unity of the most holy trinity. Amen. 
So many blessings and graces have come to us during this solemn novena. And so with grateful hearts, let us join in thanking God for all the wonderful things he does for us. And so we pray. O God, our creator, we thank you for the gift of life and all the gifts of nature, for our senses and faculties, our talents and abilities. We thank you for creating us in your image and likeness, for giving us this earth to develop, rule and control. Despite our failures, you continue to show your love for us today by increasing the life of your spirit in us at the Eucharistic table. Finally, we thank you, loving Father, for giving us Mary, the mother of your son, to be our mother of perpetual help. We are grateful for all the favors we have received to her intercession. We pray that those past favors may inspire us with greater confidence in your loving mercy to seek the aid of our mother of perpetual help. We now sing the ancient hymn of the church, Tantrum Ergo. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you give us this Eucharist as the memorial of your suffering and death. May our worship of this sacrament of your body and blood help us to experience the salvation you won for us and the peace of the kingdom where you live with the Father and the Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We ask Jesus in the Eucharist to give us all his special blessing as we think of all those joining us virtually tonight and all those who have asked us to keep them in our prayers, particularly those who are ill at this time. And so we pray together. Blessed be God. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ to God and to man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. 
Bless me, Jesus, in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Bless me, the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Bless me, the great Mother of God, Mary, most holy. Bless me, her holy and immaculate conception. Bless me, her glorious assumption. Bless me, the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Bless me, St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Bless me, God, in his angels and in his saints. Amen. At the repose of the Blessed Sacrament, please join in singing O Sacrament Most Holy. So um, we come to the end of the eighth night, so the weeks are really flying. A little bit longer tonight, but I'm sure you don't mind, you feel it's worth it. And again, to acknowledge and thank Jim for his wonderful words of words of faith to us and so much that we can take um, from our novena tonight. So thank you, Jim. Again, just remind people that so many of our petitions are for young people. I'm about to sit the junior cert and even cert. So here in St. Clair's this coming Saturday, the 1st of June, at our half six mass, there's invitation for the young people and their families to come along as we prepare, as we pray for them. Not that God will work magic for them, but that they will do their best and that they will have peace during the days ahead. So there'll be a special blessing of the hands for the young people to help them to do just that. So that's this coming Saturday at half past six. Just remind you too that our speaker next week is Elma Walsh. I think it's the third Kerry person we've had speaking at a Ravina this year. So, um, But anyway, she founded the Live Life Foundation in memory of her son and Donal, who died as a teenager, just 16 years of age. So she has an inspirational story to tell about her son, who was full, full of faith and gave people so much inspiration before he died. So Elma will be joining us, please God, next Monday night for the final night of our solemn Ravina. So again, thank you all and continue to support one another in prayers and continue to put in your petitions because we remember them not just after Novena night, but at every Mass we have here in St. Clair's during these days of our solemn Novena. Thanks in a special way too to Katrina and our lovely choirs for that um, lovely um, singing and music. Thank you. Thanks to Jessica who led us tonight in the Poor Clare community. Thank you. Just want to acknowledge and thank everybody who um, participated in our novena tonight. But a special thanks, we never thank the musicians, so it's lovely to have our musicians with us tonight. So thank you, Mary, who's always with us. Thanks to um, Ashley on the flute there. Katie, who last week celebrated her 16th birthday, and tonight Lisa is celebrating her 18th birthday. And Lisa, very much involved in our both churches in our parish, so we're going to wish both of them a happy birthday tonight. Is that okay? Yep. Um, going to be shot, but I do want to acknowledge um, those two wonderful young people who give so much to our parish, as so many young people do as well, just to acknowledge them and this special latest in it for Lisa. 
So again, thank you all, and thanks all, as I say, who participated in our novena. Matthew, who did the slides, we can't see him because he's behind, and special thanks to Captain R. Sarkisson as well. So we stand then for our concluding hymn. Please join in our final hymn, Our God Reigns. <laughs>